Welcome back, dear viewers. Thank you for staying with us here on The Breakfast Show. Egypt will be hosting COP27, the UN climate uh, conference, uh, uh, climate change conference in Sharm el Sheikh in November on behalf of the African nations, marking a turning point in global solidarity on climate action and addressing the adverse impacts of climate change on the whole world. Minister of Environment Dr. Yasmin Fouad discussed uh, with Michel Cuaroni, the Italian ambassador in Cairo, bilateral cooperation between the two countries in the fields of environment and uh, uh, climate change and plans for COP27. And Minister of Foreign Affairs Samah Shukri outlined Egypt's vision for the conference uh, of uh, parties on climate change COP27 as part of his participation in the World Economic Forum's WEF meetings uh, in uh, Davos in uh, Switzerland. Uh, we will be talking about uh, preparations for COP27, Egypt's vision, uh, Egypt presiding over that uh, global effort at the moment and discuss uh, specifically the um, impact on climate change on uh, people's uh, health uh, in the company of Dr. Mohammed Asam al-Din Abdul Gawed, uh, Professor of Biotechnology and Immunology, Helwan University. A very good morning, uh, Dr. Abdul, uh, Abdul Gawed. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good morning to you. Also. So, I, I mean, the importance, the significance, first of all, of holding COP27, Egypt hosting the conference in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt le really leading global efforts in that regard at the moment. Uh, actually hosting this uh, conference here in Egypt for the 27th session is, uh, you could say, a crowning of the efforts that has been uh, going on for at least 10 years ago from the Ministry of Environment and not only the Ministry of Environment, there is what you call a hub in each uh, ministry under the umbrella of uh, a national climate change uh, council and each ministry is putting its strategic and long-lasting plan to decrease uh, the risk of climate change and environmental changes. Indeed, uh, Dr. Abdul, uh, Abdul Gawed, uh, Egypt uh, has affirmed that it will work through its presidency uh, of COP27 to enhance international action to handle uh, climate change uh, um, um, uh, challenges and Egypt has launched the national strategy for climate change 2050, 2050. Five, yes five months ahead of the conference can you tell us more about that you know uh, uh, strategy the 2050 strategy uh, okay but let me uh, go back for a while uh, yes. in 2000 September 2015 the UN has uh, agreed on an agenda for climate uh, change uh, the agenda it's for sustainable development where they related the economic progress and balanced it to decrease the economic progress and its impact on the population right so they have put 17 sustained development goals mm -hmm. the third one is related to improving the health well-being and the 13th one is involved with emphasis on climate change and how we could uh, compromise or go along with the protection of the whole globe and the population against these climate changes. Right. Uh, uh, the climate change that we are willing to do in in uh, in Charm Sheikh is uh, what you call is a summary of what that the, the past 26 sessions has done mm -hmm. and what we are going to add from the African continent. And luckily in Africa, we don't have that much of uh, environmental or uh, climate change because we don't have that much economic progress. Uh, and, and, and of course, the uh, less fossil fuel emissions than, uh, than the rest uh, of the world. So as per the 2050 strategy, uh, Egypt seeks to expand its reliance on renewable energy, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yes, reduce fossil fuel emissions yes. and adopt sustainable uh, consumption and production models to reduce greenhouse gas emissions exactly. from other non-energy based activities. Ex exactly. Do Dr. Exactly. Abdel Gawed, yes. uh, climate change risks to health. What are the, the major risks uh, to health that climate change poses? Actually, there are five main pillars where climate change affects health. Mm -hmm. First, uh, it's the air pollution. As you just said, there is an excessive consumption and comb combustion of fossil fuel, uh, petrol, gas, coal, and this causes a, a massive uh, uh, house effect, greenhouse effect. 
you have uh, mass amounts of so toxicant in the air you inhale it you, to go to go to the lung and it gives you a lot of pulmonary diseases cardiovascular diseases heart attacks strokes it's it's really uh, mm. dangerous and gigantic side effect mm. the second pillar it would be the global warming now there is a global warming of 1.5 to 2 degree this also affects the heart and muscles that's the every what thing. every what 1.5 to 2 degrees yes every, yeah. every, if every you compare the temperature today to the same day 50 years ago 50 years yeah, 50 ago, years ago yeah. or 70 years ago mm. it will be now it will be more warmer but by 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius. So it's 1.5 to 2 degrees yes. every this 50 average, or 70 yes. years. Yes. Yeah. Actually, in the last summit in Paris, all the participants have pledged that they would reduce their emission uh, to, to reach it to the basal level, which uh, decreases by 1.5 degree. And, but nothing happens actually uh, till now. I mean, the warmer temperatures, uh, that's only in the summer, or, or that is also no. in the winter? Yes. In the winter. Yes. All so so y yes. there is a cause for melting. Yes, the exactly, ice glaciers exactly, will melt. And exactly. Yeah. So the, sec the third pillar, it would be uh, malnutrition or food insecurity because the climate change would uh, right. make the crops uh, less more vulnerable to these environmental changes. Mm. So the yield would be less and the food mm. available for everybody would be less. Mm. In addition, even the crops that would survive this climate change, their nutritional value is less, they have less zinc, iron, or uh, mm. protein. Mm. The fourth pillar is the infectious disease. When there is global warming, in insects like mosquito and uh, ticks, they flourish, really flourish. So they could increase the trans transmissibility of uh, diseases like malaria, Zika virus, dengue virus. Also, the, uh, if you have global warming, as you have just said, there will be more floods, there will be more uh, fires in forests, we don't have this, but I mean globally, mm, this mm. Uh, uh, flood uh, uh, born water would be n mm. not that uh, clean. It mm. could uh, transmit uh, disease like typhoid and cholera. And mm. the last pillar, if you combine the, last, uh, the four last pillars, it would add a lot of mental stress, which uh, produce a mental illness Compare uh, because of the climate change. Mm. So we are all, and I mean we are all, all the globe mm. are facing this together. Mm. So you don't say that this is a clean country. This is not a clean country. This is affected and this is not affected. We are all together because one country could affect the whole globe. Indeed, indeed, exactly. Dr. Abdurgawad. So uh, raising awareness about the issue, I guess, is very important. Uh, uh, for, for, for years and years, many people um, you know, played down the importance of climate change. They doubted really, uh, you, you know, that it was going to be a threat. But I guess now the world is more and more aware of the dangers. But it's very important to continue to raise awareness. So how can such a, a, a big conference like COP27 uh, help in raising people's awareness here in Egypt, in the Arab world, in the Middle East, in Africa? globally let me exemplify one thing uh, the last summer they say you could see what is the devastating and ca catastrophic outcomes of COVID-19 in about three years this is nothing literally nothing compared to the climate change catastrophic outcomes this is nothing this is only a virus as I said if you have a climate change and you have global warming you have insecurity you have more diseases this will affect the whole, uh, the whole uh, globe and especially in the low income or middle income countries, which is full. Uh, we have many. The majority Africa. of the, yes. the world's countries. So uh, this, uh, most of the people will suffer because for one thing, the heat, uh, the extreme heating. Some countries in Africa doesn't have the luxury or wealth. So each family have access to con air conditioning. So this will increase the cycle. This is one aspect. Another aspect, the drought that will happen, the coral reef uh, bleaching, uh, the decrease in the resources, all these, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, outcomes or catastrophic outcomes will be put, yes, will yeah. be put uh, on hand to all the participants and see how we could end up with an agenda or initiative that would make us more prepared to the 2050 
climate change, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, advices to the whole globe. So actually, now we are in Africa and we have to put Egypt, we'll have to put the conceptualization of Africa, of how Africa could be affected and mm. how Africa could uh, contribute to facing this really actually vicious, mm. vicious, unseen and unprecedented and uh, uh, taken for granted mm. uh, danger, which is climate change, mm. because we, we cannot replace this planet mm. there is only only one planet and we have to keep it for as long as we get not for us for the next generation as well right and and, and when you spoke of uh, you know the um, rise in temperatures how it could affect uh, africa it will also affect europe and the rest of the world i mean see what 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 happens when there is a, a heat wave in europe or you see people dying from sunstrokes and stuff like that so that's very dangerous, one and a half to two degrees, uh, not only for, for uh, warm continents like, uh, like Africa, Africa, but also for, for, for Europe and for the rest of the world. Yes, actually, the Armenian aspect in this. Actually, Africa, yeah. genetically and uh, by, uh, yeah, by yeah. we are prepared for uh, warming mm. because we are always in a warm environment. Mm, mm. Actually, uh, Europe, if one or two degrees, this would be lethal. Uh, actually fatal yeah second have you noticed from six months there are floods in in not in in rural areas but actually in main areas in cities in, in cities in italy in germany this is because of the climate change mm. but the problem is in their hand because they have mm. the highest mm. co co Form combustion of fossil fuels, of fossil fuels. Yes. not us actually mm. not us right and actually you have seen here there is a presidency campaign to increase the production of green fuels like the green hydrogen production and this is uh, one among many initiatives that the political leadership in Egypt is doing for at least eight years ago. Right, so, so yeah. let's talk about the state efforts here in Egypt, uh, Dr. Abdel Gawed, uh, to increase uh, research on health risks of, of climate change. How do you see this progressing? It's, it's really progressing. The awareness, the Ministry of Environment actually is uh, is putting a lot of uh, of effort to disseminate the awareness and the info needed for all the people to know. I mean, the layman uh, in the street know what is climate change. He has to know or she that climate change is really important and risky thing that he has to uh, what we call uh, to uh, contribute in it. Even lighting one cigarette could affect the whole globe. For regarding research in the last uh, for. Uh, eight months, Egypt uh, has uh, launched many calls for, for uh, finding innovative solutions to protect uh, Egypt from climate change on using green fuels, different kinds, on producing crops that is, uh, that is bred against salinity, against diseases, against drought, uh, finding uh, uh, innovative ways for recycling of, uh, of wastes. Uh, there are, I think there are millions of Egyptian bonds has been bumped by uh, the Egyptian Ministry of Higher Education and uh, uh, the Science and Technology Development Fund. So actually there are a lot of effort. This is only for Egypt. There are many, uh, mm. what you call, uh, joint collaboration, as you have just said, between Italy and Egypt, mm. now between Sweden and Egypt. Mm. There was a call between uh, UK and Egypt, and there is a, was a call between Germany and Egypt. So actually, a lot, a lot of effort is going on. Indeed, and uh, a lot of incentives are also being offered uh, for businesses uh, to go to green uh, economy. Um, how do you see that uh, also uh, progressing, the incentives, and, and how is this a necessity for, uh, um, for businesses to go to green uh, economy, the incentives. Actually now, if you apply for a funding, even for private or business or even a research project, and you add or you have added the slogan that you have a green business, that you are going to work in a green environment, whatever things you are doing, it will be a green recycling way. This is an add up, an advantage that your project or your business will be funded and flourished and accepted not nationally, but also regionally and internationally. Right. Uh, the topics, uh, Dr. Abdel Gawed, that uh, will be topping the agenda of uh, COP27, um, uh, 
which topics do you think are more important and which topics you want to be prioritized? First of all, we, uh, the environmental uh, effects of the climate change because uh, step by step we are, you, we are starting to lose some of the, what do you call, uh, the things or the living organisms that are, are uh, habitating the same uh, environment. Sometimes, uh, for example, some species of some rare uh, uh, animals we are going to lose because of the climate change. Mm. And the climate change is affecting our, uh, our uh, museums, our uh, heritage of uh, different uh, pharaonic or Islamic or Coptic uh, uh, museums. This is, yeah. this is really important. Uh, also, uh, we are losing some, uh, some of the crops in favor of the climate change. These are all a, a very important. If you uh, try to improve this, all the other experts will improve, including the health. We are trying to produce green fuels like the hydrogen, green hydrogen. We are trying to make green environment. So we starting to increase the green, uh, the green color in our society. Yeah, the, the word green, I mean, wh when it's used like green economy, green environment, uh, green buildings, uh, green... Talk to us about that concept. Uh, I mean, it, it uh, green. It means it, it means uh, uh, ecosystem or environment friendly. Mm. So it doesn't. Yeah. You don't have to produce uh, what they call carbon dioxide yeah. or gases yeah. that affect the ozone layer and increase the global warming. Mm -hmm. This is one aspect. The other aspect, whatever the work you are doing in your project or your work, it should be recycled. Okay. Mm. So you don't have to use plastics anymore because they cannot be recycled. You have to use. Uh, things that, that they could be, uh, what they call, digested by the, by the earth and it could return to the earth without having, what they call, thousands of years uh, hanging there in earth without being removed. This is what you want by, by green. Okay. Uh, uh, Egypt uh, has estimated that the national climate action on mitigation and adaptation would require 73 billion US dollars in the upcoming 10 years such an estimate needs to be updated and revised upwards uh, in the light of uh, uh, emerging issues on the national regional and global scenes do you see that uh, there is uh, enough um, dedication globally to fight to, to meet the financial uh, um, requirements of fighting climate uh, change frankly no mm. But there are efforts because uh, the people that are flagging the, the danger of climate change, and it's true, they themselves they are not putting real efforts to decrease their consumption. For example, the European Union, uh, they have uh, dedicated 350 billion euros for the, from the period of 2021 to 2027 for uh, counteracting the climate change uh, uh, problems, but in the meantime, you will find that they are using gas and benzene every day. Every although, although at least 25 percent of the population in Europe are using green uh, green transportation, mm. like cycling, mm. even walking, and so on, mm. sharing the same car. This is really good. Mm. But this effort is not enough because you could measure it by how much emission, and the emission mm. is still high. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and it's not only Euro, Europe, right? There is the, the Far East. There is a problem in the Far East as yes, well. Yes, uh, if you're in the Far East, China, and uh, uh, this issue is not actually what they call. Uh, uh, it's not a priority. Yes, yes there, at all, so. at yeah. all, at mm. all, because they are mm. uh, they are working on the clock, and this is not mm. a priority at all for them. For example, New Delhi, the capital of India, is the most polluted capital in the whole world. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you have the, the, the BRIC nations, uh, they have a big responsibility as well. One of them is India, one of them yes, is China, China. Brazil, US, yes, Russia. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. So and still the awareness is not completely in these countries. Mm -hmm. You could see it by how much research they do it in this field. Mm -hmm. Those countries, the research that has done in this field, are very few. Mm -hmm. We are focusing here on the EU and mm -hmm. the US, mm -hmm. mainly. How do you see the efforts in the air world? I mean, we see Egypt taking a lead, uh, even globally, on, on the global scale, not only in the region, but uh, other Arab countries, how, how do you see their uh, uh, efforts or interest or 
keenness on solving that um, problem? Still, there are, there are what you call a, a, a considerable uh, progress. But when you say when you say to someone in the Arab world that there is global warming, okay, I have already a high temperature. So what is new? But he has to know that we are living in the same uh, world. But as I told you, the main uh, main cause of the climate change problem is the consumption of the fossil fuels, and even the whole uh, Arab world. Uh, collectively is not uh, using that much but it is growing it is not as uh, neglected but it, the awareness mm -hmm. is growing. and actually there are consortia now between the arab worlds to have climate change supreme council in this and it is going Good. on it Good. is going on uh, how do you see the role of the media on, on on raising awareness i'm not just talking about official media or a visual uh, media um, but i'm also talking about social media i mean and how can you know, the government perhaps or non-governmental organizations use that platform. Yes, actually, if you talk about the national social media, no, they are not giving that much effort in mm. this aspect mm. because they are still considering it a luxury. But uh, many of the non-governmental organizations, could I say a name? It's okay. It's like Masr al Khair. Mm. Masr al Khair, they are putting a lot of effort in this yes. aspect and they are doing fine. Actually. It's good that we're seeing uh, uh, NGOs uh, taking yes. care of, uh, of the issue. Now, finally, final question, Dr. Abdelgoed, because unfortunately we're out of time. Yes. Uh, as a professor of uh, uh, immunology, tell us what to do to uh, protect ourselves from you know, the, the pollution uh, around us until we find a, a real global solution. Yes. Actually, you have to, you, to start with yourself. So if you have a car, you, you don't have to use it every day. You could share it with, uh, with others. Maybe you use the European system in certain days. These certain car numbers could go. That you saves money as well. That's as good. Actually, yeah. this is really good. Yeah. If you are smoking, please uh, quit smoking or at least decrease the number of smokers. If you are uh, uh, using four air conditioners, make it one, make it two. Try to decrease uh, the, the pollution from yourself, your family, your district, and then you could move along. All right. It's our responsibility, it all is. of us. It is. Dear viewers, on behalf of you, we thank very much Dr. Mohammed Asam al Din Abdel Gawed, uh, Professor of Biotechnology and Immunology. Helwan University for enlightening us on the very important issue of climate change. Thank you very much, Dr. Abdi uh, Great pleasure, pleasure to see you. Hope to see Likewise. you again. Dear viewers, please stay with us. My dear colleague, Mahesi Rabia, will be back to resume this morning's edition of The Breakfast Show. Still talking about COP27, Egypt leading global efforts in fighting global warming. Please stay with us.